Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you. Trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray about the condition and the direction of our nation and our world. We want to continue to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and wherever you attend, you pray for your church and your pastor and his family. And lastly, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. God, we pray for a great and effectual door of utterance to be opened up in this moment, not just here in this city, but around our nation and to apostolics all over the world. God, we pray for a great and effectual door of utterance to be opened. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your favor and blessing. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, you'd furnish each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask all these things in the name, above every other name, the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. <clears throat> One verse of scripture found in the book of Proverbs. And this is what it says. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. The illustration there is likening a disloyal person, undependable, There's a lot of synonyms I could put in there. Is like a foot out of joint and a broken tooth. When you have a broken tooth, you chew on the other side. You avoid it. You avoid using a broken tooth. Um, I can remember several years ago needing a filling, not being able to get to a dentist right away, and you you avoid chewing on that tooth because you realize that when you do, it's going to hurt. A foot out of joint means that you're putting more pressure on the good foot and taking less pressure off the bad foot. You avoid using it. You avoid using that which is broken or foot out of joint. Don't put any weight on it. I want to take this word unfaithful. I'd like to extrapolate. And I'd like to use the word disloyal. Disloyal. And I, I want to I entitle this um, because I'm going to use several illustrations here at the end. But I want to entitle this The Fatal Flaw. The Fatal Flaw. Um, loyalty, when you talk about loyalty, um, and I am a believer in loyalty, it is a, it is a, it brings out the best in people when they have the right kinds of loyalties. And loyalty is, is interesting in that 
people cannot be pressured or coerced to be loyal. It is, it is one of those things. It's like respect and trust. You know, you can't force people to respect you. You cannot intimidate them into, um, into trusting you. These are, in order for it to be authentic or genuine, it has to be, it has to be freely given. It has to be a volun voluntary decision or choice or even a deduction, the end result of other things. And you just go, man, I trust this person. And man, I respect that person. And I'm going to be loyal to this person or, the, or these people. Or you can fill in your blank. I believe you absolutely have to have loyalties in your life. I'm talking about the right type of loyalties where there is principle and character. And as I've already mentioned, it's a voluntary act of the spirit. And I believe that it's based in love and respect. It really is. Um, there are people and things Things that when I say things, I'm talking about principles and things that are represented by principles like truth and and my pastor and spiritual leaders, people that people that have over the years proven themselves and that I have admired and loved and respected. I am loyal. I am loyal to those people. I am loyal to those things. I am loyal to my wife. I'm loyal to my family. I'm, the list goes on. And you have the same list. Or you should have the same lo list. When a person is proven to be disloyal, I believe that it is a, it is a flaw. It is a character flaw that, that, Somewhere, Jesus, let me describe it by saying this. Jesus said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. When people are disloyal, they shift around a little bit. They're, they're not, they're, they're willing to compromise on those types of things. It's not, no, this is just the way it is. Um, this is truth and I have a conviction. They, they waffle on that a little bit and they will, and they will shift around a little bit. And the more that disloyalty works like, like uh, a door that doesn't fit the frame anymore, it just gets worse with time until it becomes something that is noticeable. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it takes circumstances, situations to where these types of things become manifest. When you have ideals and principles, as I've already mentioned, loyalty to the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, I love saying that. We have little kids that watch us in our church and they love it when I say ladies and gentlemen. A man is known by his loyalties. After a while, when you get when, when you've lived life a little bit, a man becomes associated with his word and what that represents and the loyalties that that represents. And I was listening to some preaching here um, not too long ago that uh, the person that was preaching said that Peter had betrayed Jesus. No, and I was screaming out in my heart, no, 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 no. And there is a huge description and distinction there between Peter and Judas. Peter denied Jesus. And if we deny him, he will deny us. And, and, but, but, Peter's denial was fixable. It was treatable. It was repentable. It was forgivable. It was, I believe that Jesus prophesied that in Luke chapter number 22. Jesus, Jesus saw Peter's faulty character. He saw 
He saw where he was as a human being, where he was, and and you understand that. You know, Peter, do you love me? Jesus looked at that and realized this is going to treat some deeper things in Peter. Judas, on the other hand, betrayed Jesus. And when Judas betrayed, he sold it all. He sold it all and couldn't get the blood off of his hands. Big difference between denial and betrayal. Big difference. Um, confidence or trust in a disloyal person in time of trouble. You will avoid using them. And I really don't know why I'm even talking about this this morning. I just really, really, I had some other things, some other directions that I was going to go. We'll definitely get to those. But I really wanted to talk about this because in the day and the hour in which we live, you can read it in Matthew chapter 24. You can read it in Mark 13. You can read it in Luke chapter number 21. They're all end time scenarios. You you will see that disloyalty and and broken relationships and people not being true and, and um, the love of many shall wax cold and people are offended and broken relationships and children against their parents and da, da, da. You've got to have some loyalties, loyalty to the truth, loyalty to God called leadership, not just somebody self-proclaimed kind of a deal. God called proven tested leadership. Okay, and to your parents. Those are my top three loyalties to the truth, God called leadership, and to your parents. A couple examples that I want to give to us about loyalty being disloyalty being the fatal flaw, a man by the name of Gehazi, how many privileged young men, I call him younger, he was a servant to the prophet, Gehazi. He is a witness to what happens to Naaman the Syrian, the, Syrian, the captain of the host that is a leper, and he sees this whole thing play out. Once Naaman is healed, he wants to bestow good things upon the prophet. But because the prophet is wiser than that and does not want to be beholden to Naaman this year, and he's rejoicing, you've been healed, go on. You finally got around to obeying what I told you to do, which is, you need, to, you need to go down seven times in the River Jordan, not just the rivers of Damascus, not just the rivers of anywhere. It's got to be exactly how I tell you to do it. Somebody said, amen. Naaman finally gets around to it. There's a lot I could say about this, but I don't have the time. Naaman finally obeys. He is completely healed. He wants to bless the prophet. The prophet refuses. But Gehazi hatches a plan that he will leave when the prophet is not looking and he will chase down Naaman and he will get something out of it. Gehazi is confronted by the prophet. Where were you? Nowhere. I didn't go anywhere. Lying, lying. The same leper that was on Naaman is now on you. Could not be, who in their right mind would miss the opportunity? I know they're sons of the prophets and, and they're all in this group and 
but you have the esteemed position of being right next, rubbing shoulders with the prophetical, and you threw it all away. For a few changes of clothes, confidence in an unfaithful man. Joab, for many years, worked right alongside the greatest king that Israel ever knew. And on David's deathbed, he said, there's two men I don't trust. Shimei and Joab. Solomon, I'm going to leave it in your hands how you are to deal with this. Shimei, of course, could live as long as he didn't leave the city. And an opportunity arose where his servants ran off. He found out where the servants were. And he paid the price for that. Joab did not follow after Absalom in the rebellion against David. But he did align himself with Adonijah. It took many, many, many years. And Joab finally manifested everything. Joab ran into the place where the altar was. His hands are on the horns of the altar, looking for mercy. And his disloyalty became a fatal flaw. There are some things that the altar can't fix. You just got to get it protect it. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. God bless you. We we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.